Hello folks, this is Clayton Markser from the Adventure Cowboy Channel. Today I'm going to shoot this Cimarron 1874 Sharps business rifle in 4570 at 515 yards with a 20 inch gong. Offhand. We're going to try for a second shot at 515 yards with the Cimarron 1874 Sharps business rifle manufactured by Petter Soli. This is one fantastic firearm. The target is 1,043 yards away. Hit the bottom of the right post. This is the Cimarron 1874 Sharps business rifle, manufactured by Petersoli in Italy. It is a 4570 chambering. It's got a color case hardened receiver. Now this isn't as high gloss as some of the other fancier models, which I actually like for hunting purposes. It's got a parkerized 32 inch octagon barrel. The stock and the, the forearm are walnut and it weighs about 11.89 pounds and that's before you put on the Petersoli tang sight. It features double set triggers and it has the same gold medal accuracy of other more expensive Petersoli rifles. And like I've mentioned before, this is the exact same action as the Billy Dixon or the Quigley. It's just packaged in a little bit different aesthetic. The price, this one is a heck of a shooter and it's a lot more affordable than the Billy Dixon. Now, a couple of the things that you're gonna notice on this business rifle is that it's got a parkerized barrel. So the parkerized finish is kind of a, a dull finish, kind of a matte in contrast to the blued barrel on my Billy Dixon. The advantage to the sportsman, which is a lot of my viewers, they're, they're hunters, or they're interested in getting into the growing sport of hunting with traditional rifles. This rifle is, in my opinion, a superior hunting rifle, um, if not for any other reason other than it's not so bright and shiny. The sun reflects off all this glossy metal and glints but on this one, it, it's kind of full, and it does, the sun just doesn't bounce off of it like it does this one. Now, this one might be more pleasing to the human eye, but um, they're essentially the same rifle. They're both extremely effective when it comes to the action and the barrel. Um, the fit and finish of both of them are very good. The, the wood to metal finish on the Petersoli is quite good for a rifle that is going to be in the $1,450 price range. This gun is a heck of a rifle for several hundred dollars less than this rifle. So while we're talking about quality, I want to say that this Cimarron 1874 Sharps business rifle is probably the most affordable, high quality Sharps rifle produced and available currently. There's lots of other brands that you could probably find that are less expensive and cheaper, but 
if you find one of those that are cheaper, you're probably not going to find those in the winner circle of these big black powder competitions. Now, granted, a lot of the the winning rifles at these huge competitions are custom made rifles. Um, there's a couple companies here in Montana that make Sharps rifles that are exquisite, but they're also starting at 2,500, 3,000 bucks and a huge waiting list. These Pedersoli rifles compete with those very well. In fact is they're in the winter circle often. Now, if you're gonna buy a Sharps, but you can't afford you know, one of the high, high quality ones, why not get the best one you can buy for the money? And that right now, as of today, I believe is the Cimarron 1874 Sharps business rifle made by Petter Soli. If you're wanting to get into target shooting or just even long range shooting for fun with the Sharps rifles, I highly recommend getting a tang sight. This is the tang of the rifle, so that's why it's called a tang sight. This one is actually called a Petter Soli long range Sewell sight. They actually have a couple different models. Um, there's a medium range, which is a bit shorter, and really that's all I would need, but they sent me this and I'm trying it out. I do really like um, the adjustability of it. You just loosen the, the peep here and you can change the elevation up or down there. I'm not gonna mess with it because it's set right now for 1,043 yards. And no, I don't have any video of the gong getting hit at that range, just lots of really close misses. <laughs> The wood on this stock is really, really nice walnut. And the fit and finish, as you can tell, for a economical Sharps rifle, you will not find a better fit and finish of the wood than on these Petter Soli rifles. I'm not gonna say that every single rifle that comes out of the factory has a fit like that, but the ones that I have seen all pretty much look exactly like that. Another thing you'll see on the fancy models like the Billy Dixon or the Quigley are these metal butt caps. Now these are beautiful, but they are cold and they are slick. In contrast to that, the Cimarron business rifle has a black textured plastic butt cap. Now that is hard plastic, it's not gonna break or anything like that. But it does get a better grip on your shoulder than this fancier model. Yet another reason why I think the business rifle is a superior hunting rifle over the fancier models. Another thing that we'll talk about here is the sight. The sight on this, um, as you can see, it's got a vertical back edge. Now, that might not seem that odd to some of you, but a lot of times when you get these Sharps rifles, and the standard sights they come with are shaped more like that. It's, it's rounded. And this is for pulling in and out of saddle scabbards or just you know regular leather scabbard. These don't get hung up very easy. <clears throat> the thing I like about the business rifle instead of this one, is that when I'm shooting at longer ranges, in certain light, you see how the, the finish is worn off on the sight here? Sometimes the light hits the sight in different areas, so it can be a little bit deceiving where the top of your bead actually is. So while I'm still accurate with this rifle, having been shooting the business rifle from Cimarron, I really have started to prefer this sight. Now this sight, it's obvious where the top of your bead is. Even if the finish was to wear off, you don't have a rounded surface where the sunlight can glint off of different points, you know, distorting your view because you're looking at it from the back and it's a straight up post. I really like that um, coupled with peep sights. Now a lot of people, especially when you get into bigger competitions, they will shoot, they'll have a globe front sight. They'll have a sight that has a, you know, a big hood over it and interchangeable apertures. But for the purposes of hunting, I don't really like globe sights 
especially since most of the game that we are going to have opportunities at is going to be in not exactly favorable light conditions. It's usually the last hour of sunlight and the first hour of sunlight. So in those cases, you don't really want a hooded site that's going to inhibit the amount of light that comes into your site. For those of you who may be wondering how the action of the 1874 Sharps works, I'm gonna show you really quickly. First, you cock the hammer back one click. That takes the pressure off of this button right here. This little button right here is what engages the firing pin, which is inside the block. If you do not pull the hammer back one click, when you drop this block, the firing pin is protruding just into the chamber just a little bit. So when you drop it, the firing pin catches on the edge of the chamber and you can break off the tip of the firing pin. So for Sharps rifles, one click back, drop the block with this lever here. You can see now the chamber's open. You insert a cartridge in. Here's your ejector right there. Then you close the breech. Then you cock it the rest of the way. Now your action is ready to fire. So the triggers on these Sharps rifles work in a couple different ways. They're, they are a double set trigger. And the way that works is it's kind of like a double action revolver. You have a long kind of heavy trigger pull for some situations and you have a very light crisp trigger pull for other situations. This is kind of similar to that. If you were hunting whitetails, let's say in a heavy brush and you're gonna have to snap shoot, I call it, where you just pull the gun to your shoulder and fire a quick shot, perhaps at a moving target. Just shooting the gun with the standard eight to nine pound pull on the trigger is probably your best bet. However, if you are 400 yards from a big elk and you have the ability to reliably kill an animal that far with your rifle, you will want to use the set trigger function. And then what the set trigger does is it takes their main firing trigger from eight to nine pounds on this rifle to 17 ounces. Therefore giving you a very, very crisp and light trigger pull resulting in a more accurate shot. If you've ever watched a Western movie where they shoot from long distances like some modern day sniper with a beautiful, elegant rifle and that rifle inhabits your dreams Okay, now I'm talking about myself. Because after I saw the movie Quigley Down Under as a kid, I could not get this gun out of my brain. Now, this isn't the Quigley model. It's not quite as glossy as, say, the Quigley or the Billy Dixon like this one up here. But it is still the exact same action. The accuracy of the Sharps rifle is legendary. And these two rifles from Cimarron Firearms are no exception. Rifles like these, are often found in the winter circle of black powder shooting matches, such as the Quigley shoot in Eastern Montana. So if you're looking to get into shooting Sharps rifles and you don't have a lot of extra money laying around, the best way you can do it is to buy this gun from Cimarron, the 1874 Sharps business rifle. Cold on the rock. Trying to go for dead center. I think that went in the crack. I'm going to do one more. Hit it.